BAM! So I thought I would do somewhat of a introduction to the ketogenic diet for those who it's very interesting a lot of people are just finding me now because I've been doing this been grinding out videos for the last three years solid so for those who've already you know kind of been following me and understand the data then this may not be as interesting but for those who just found me I just want to kind of do a brush up on what the hell it is because people seem to still not understand what it is to be in ketosis like how do you actually feel so I thought let's talk about this right there are so many people on the internet now talking about this with so um, such subjective ways of thinking and, and people actually challenge my objective or subjective opinions on the subject but note myself talking about keto is coming from a couple of different arenas if I should put it in that context number one I've done it eight years non-stop with no refeeds on alcohol, chewing gum, sugar, carbs. I've kept my carbs under 20 net carbs for eight years with no refeeds, not once, and no one has done that. People have done a low carb, high fat dietary protocol with every once in a while breaking it through the holidays on a glass of wine, but they've done it for 15 years, mostly low carb, high fat. Not this chick. I'm doing an experiment, so constantly people are, are challenging me to refeed because I've done it for a while, so I have a little fun. I mean, uh, people say, well, now that you've done keto for a while, you shouldn't take but a day to get back in if you were to pop out drinking a glass of wine, for example. But that's not the point. The point is to be able to refer to the data of being able to be strict and understand what it's like, because I know what you have to consider when you've done it as long as I have without any refeeding or reintroducing back in carbohydrate sugars into my diet or dropping my fat. So I will be 50 years of age in 2017 so in a year I will be 50 and uh, if you guys look at my videos you can see that I just I have the ability to manipulate my body fat percentage Without a problem, some days I appear to be more lean or uh, less, but sometimes it's because I'm on my menstrual cycle. Sometimes I just ate food or drank a grip load of water because it's summer now, and boof, you know, you're ending up looking like this. But um, this is the by effect of being in ketosis for a long time, and um, I show you my physique so you understand you can go back and match videos and see that as I get older, as, as I get older, as you guys can see, physically and the body just gets better. I often explain to people I'm lean, but I have a lot of subdermal fat or sub-Q fat. But really, in the, the, the layers of my skin, you can see there's a lot of fat uh, because I eat a very, very high fat diet. I probably have my fat around 200 grams. 220 grams of actual total fat, not in grams of weight, but I probably have that much in my diet, which obviously prevents me from drying out. Um, you can see that the size of my muscles are not huge, right? So this is all natural. I did a video, some videos ago about dropping all my supplements. Now, a lot of you guys are getting that wrong. I'm not saying to get rid of all your supplements. I'm saying I decided to get rid of them because I had 500,000 of them and let's see how much I can uh, because I still do magnesium maybe vitamin C on occasion uh, potentially some chelating factors but in the most I just want to take my liver break from all the supplements um, but anyway I digress let's get back to keto and how do you know if you're in ketosis well clearly you guys can see that I'm in ketosis just for the physical aspects of um, you know dieting creates vascularity you're losing a lot of water you're losing a lot of fat fat in the skin and that's why people become very dry and as you can see a woman who is almost in her 50s I am not dry whatsoever you now my skin collagen is still very elastic there's still a lot of fat in that skin which is the youth and vitality that we're looking for and this is what I know is the change from me having videos or pictures of me at 36 
and me now being uh, 49. So this is the, uh, the um, you can compare the two and really see that the body really just gets better as you get older. We don't have to age, guys, like uh, exponentially in that rapid pace that we've grown up believing that's what age looks like. You slow down, you know, you get tired, uh, you you just age, your skin ages, your everything ages, your sleep becomes less, your stomach acids go down, digestive, all these, that's not true. That you, you don't have the energy, energy, energy. You can have the energy. But let's talk about the signs and symptoms so you guys don't go nuts waiting for that content in the video. So essentially, uh, you know it's a high fat, low carb diet. You have to have enough fat in your diet to stimulate fat breakdown, lipolysis, and get your liver to start converting units of fat into viable sources of energy that can fit within your energy system, your, the Krebs cycle, to fit within cells to be used as energy rather than glucose. Which somebody had inboxed me that there's an article that, you know, uh, the brain cannot run on anything but glucose. Well, clearly I am not dead, so that is not true. So I digress. Here we go. Um, you got to flood the bloodstream with fat. There's problems with that. A lot of you guys have gallbladder issues. You have low stomach acid. You start upping your fat. You get up to about 100. People are like, uh, I'm gagging. I felt bloated. I feel nauseated. Not, not everybody, but a lot of you guys do. So up, the fat goes back down. And then you have your carbs low. You have your fat too low. You have your protein too high. You don't adapt. You might lose some water weight or muscle. And so you lose weight on the scale. And then you think that you are now adapting because that's how people measure if they're in ketosis is to measure if they've lost weight on a scale, which is so stupid. I mean, people aren't stupid, but that concept is very naive. Um, then they don't adapt, then they, the cravings come, like insane cravings, and then they digress, and then they cheat, then they binge, and hence the whole cycle starts. The water comes back up, or they'll gain half that water back. Um, so what you do feel, I want to talk about how you feel. So I've been in ketosis for eight years solid, eight. It's over eight now because every day ticks and time keeps moving. And uh, I noticed that, sure, if I eat too much protein, if I eat it too fast, that's my nemesis. That's the thing where this kind of insulin response happens. I, my protein is converted back into glucose. Brain's like, whoa, flood of glucose. It's not really a lot of glucose, but my insulin sensitivity slams down that glucose and I feel tired. And uh, I feel sleepy, more sleepy. And uh, it's, a, it's a crappy feeling. You guys are walking around all the time feeling tired and sleepy. I don't know how you do it. People are literally like, you don't do caffeine? Like, not at all? Like, at all? And I'm like, looking at them like, you're, are you nuts? Shit's nasty. That, what's wrong with you? And when people are like, what's wrong with it? I'm like, only an addict would say what's wrong with it. Like, hello, this is a natural body. Right? Caffeine is not an essential nutrient to heal the body. It like overstimulates the adrenal glands to do a job they're not equipped for. So a lot of you guys crash, right? You become malabsorptive and D's and testosterone come out. They're not being absorbed. Growth hormone. Everything's not functioning in a homeostatic balance. But when you're adapted, you begin to, uh, like I said, skin be like small things. Skin begins to feel really moist and, and not dry, right? That's one really amazing quality in your hair, your nails get strong, uh, you begin to sleep better. Nine times out of 10, these are the emails I get from clients. I'm sleeping so much better, I, I never thought I could sleep better. I thought I was a night owl, I thought I was nocturnal. And then they start getting into the right circadian rhythm because to keto adapt, you have to do everything correct. If you do not do the right application of keto, you will not adapt. Therefore, you will always be a carb burner trying to keto adapt. And there's a big distinction with that. Um, you feel uh, energized. It's like kind of weird because you feel good, right? You feel ripe. You feel balanced. You become more objective. Like the mind, the candida overload on the brain cells, the glucose, the, the high glucose, which the brain doesn't like, 
all of a sudden you have this mental clarity, you're remembering things more clearly, you become more hormonally balanced, your reproductive system as well as your adrenals balance. And so it's not just like a, you know, oh, I'm, I have a lot of energy like I took Adderall. No, it's a kind of, it's a kind of hippy dippy body balance energy. I can't explain it where you actually feel more connected to the moment, right? You don't feel so ADD, you know, just cranky and moody and can't focus. Like I watch people having conversations, they're tapping on things, their eyes are tracking all over the place. Like they're not there. Like that's your hormones out of whack. These are adrenal, adrenaline junkies, all you guys have anxiety and depression and mood disorder. And, I mean, it's insane. Like every single thing that you do in a day matters on how balanced you feel, how objective you feel, how right you feel instead of wrong. And the body responds. This is a by effect of, of, of everything that I do to be in a balance. This is not genetics, guys. This is epigenetics, and you can see that it's epigenetics. It's not about having brown skin. It's about being balanced. Every single thing that I do in a day matters. So how do you feel? You feel balanced. You feel right. You feel connected to the universe. You feel like every sound, every smell, everything becomes visceral and instead of annoying the crap out of you. Because I live in a noisy ass city where you don't feel numb. The energy is very bizarre, and then when you crank up the energy, you don't crash, right? You don't feel worn out. You're not a sore post-workout. If you walk all day, if you're on your feet all day, you're not sore, you're not achy. That rheumatoid or osteoarthritic or rhytic effect goes down exponentially. The asthmatic, the allergies, the sinus infections, the inability to, like I said, focus, the skin issues, the rashes, the... Um, complete and utter pain all over the body, the exhaustion, people who've got Lyme's and lupus and, and uh, you know, people who are developing cancer and obviously the thyroid shutting down, people who can't poop and, and people's hair who's shedding and men, your testosterone is way like this, testosterone balances, the woody comes back and you can hold it longer and women, your, your sex drive comes back, your testosterone rises, your estrogen balance with your progesterone, it's protective that progesterone, it begins to balance. You feel attractive, you feel, you just feel like a human being. Within the minutia, right, and the monotony of garbage out there, you feel more balanced. But to get into that highly keto adapted state, people are not willing to do whatever it takes. They're always looking for the shortcut. And it will never happen. There's no such thing. It is literally all or nothing. All or nothing. And that's why when you go on the internet and you listen to these people and their garbled nonsense of, you know, these are your macros and this is my daily keto meal and how I lost 30 pounds. It's so subjective because keto isn't about that. You've got to understand the body. When people ask me questions, I go learn about the body. Learn about your reproductive system. Learn about your vascular system, your heart and lung, the muscular system, the brain, right? The pineal gland, the, the hypothalamus pituitary axis. Learn about your gut health, right? Learn about circadian rhythms. And if you learn about all these things, you will understand more how your own body works. You'll be able to to go down that rabbit's hole and find the initial issue on why you became a night owl or why you like drinking a little bit too much at night or why you have sugar cravings so bad or why drugs become such an issue, why you have developed depression, why is there autism, why is there cancer running through your bloodline? Because if you go down and start understanding epigenetics more, you have the ability to alter your genes, right? Your DNA. So this is what I want people to consider, not just fat loss, not weight on a scale. Because if I didn't have an arm, I couldn't grow another one. We can get stronger, fitter. We can at any age. We can. This is not genetics, guys. This is epigenetics. And if I've got to go and bounce around and show my energy in videos, to draw the attention, to really go down and find the underlying issues of why, or the big questions of who, what, why, and how, 
we've come to where we're at. People are distracted. I was talking yesterday in the gym 